Welcome to ProConnect. The first thing we'll need to do is update your Hereback Pro Hub to the latest bootloader and firmware. You should only need to do this process once. After that, all updates can be done through this ProConnect software with just a few clicks. Using a CAT5 or CAT6 cable will connect our Pro Hub to our network. In our case, it's a laptop. And make sure it goes in the H bus in. And then we'll check the settings page to make sure we're connected to the correct network. You'll see the text switch from red to white if it's connected. We'll go back to devices. And we'll wait 30 seconds once we turn the Pro Hub on to make sure it connects. You'll see it come up with a red icon, red info icon over here that indicates it'll need a software update or a bootloader update. So we click the button and see our options here. Um, there are a few cautionary notes, uh, especially if you have very old firmware on your mixers, um, but we are ready to go. One note, make sure you have a USB type B2 cable. And then we'll click next. So newer hubs will have a uh, selection button that you can press. Other older hubs won't. We'll get to that in a minute. First, we'll turn the Pro Hub off using the switch, and then we'll connect the USB cable to the back of the hub. And uh, that is also connected to our computer through the USB. So timing on this next step is really critical. Uh, you'll need something sharp like a paper clip, something small to select the button. Within a second of pressing that, turn the power on. So we have our high-tech paper clip, and uh, we'll press the button, and then immediately turn the hub on. So we'll kind of work between the cables, press the select button, turn the hub on. Then you hold that for five seconds, or a little more just to be on the safe side. But what if our Pro Hub does not have a select button? Then we will turn the power off, and we can either remove the top of the hub or slide the card out, uh, the main card. So this set of instructions walks us through. Taking the lid off is the preferred method, but if it's rack mounted, if it's really difficult to get to, then uh, you can slide the main card out, which we'll do. Um, and you should also be able to locate the jumper pins on the right hand side of the main card. And it's shown here and we'll show a bit of the video as well. Be really careful when you're taking the main card in and out. It can have some problems if you don't slide it in exactly right. Some of the components on the bottom can get damaged, so take your time and slide it evenly. So here we will remove the main card from the hub with it powered off. We'll locate the jumper pins on the right hand side, and then we will put the little jumper on the pins. You can slide that back in. You can also use a alligator clip or something else to short, but um, jumper's best. So we'll connect the USB cable to our computer, but not connect it to the Pro Hub just yet. This is another time sensitive step where you'll need to plug your USB cable in and then immediately turn the power switch to the hub on. So we'll plug the USB in and then immediately turn the hub on within one second and it should connect. Then once it's connected, we'll click next. And now we scan for the hub and the bootloader on the hub was found by the ProConnect software. And then we just click the button that says Program Bootloader. And success. We'll click Next. So we'll turn off the Pro Hub and disconnect the USB cable from our hub, but not from our computer just yet. We'll be using it again later. Now we'll need to take off the jumper from the jumper pins. Remove that and slide the main card back in very carefully if you chose to take the card out. And then we'll need to make sure that the card clicks back into place. Uh, if you boot your hub up and it looks red at the end of this process, it, there's a good chance that that card did not get seated properly. If you took the hub lid off, make sure you put the lid back on. For the next step, you'll need the same cables that we just used for the FPGA update. This is a one-time update you'll need to do the first time you update, uh, but after that, all other updates should be done just automatically through the app. You shouldn't have to do anything additional. So we'll just make sure the hub is switched off. And again, make sure that jumper is removed. 
So this time we'll make sure the hub is turned on first. We'll wait for 10 seconds and then plug in our USB cable, kind of backwards what we did last time. If you're on a PC or a Mac, it may look different, but it should mount a mass storage device. You should be able to locate that in your files, whether on a Mac or a PC. Once we've determined it does exist on the files, you'll just click the Start Transfer button, and the ProConnect app does all the work. And then we can see it has successfully updated, and we can click the Next button. Now we eject the external drive from our files, and then we'll need to turn the Pro Hub off once we're done with that. Once the Pro Hub is turned off, click Next, and we'll disconnect the USB cable from the Pro Hub and turn the hub power back on. Then we'll check our work to make sure that the bootloader and firmware updates took. We'll go to Devices and make sure that our firmware is 8 or higher, and it is, so we're good to go.